What is going on, Blast Cannon Nation? Oh, oh my God. Oh my Woo. goodness. <laughs> Prepare to be underwhelmed. <laughs> Can you imagine they paid for this? <laughs> what fools, Grant! What fools! <laughs> Morons. Uh, oh my goodness. This, this, this is very exciting. <laughs> and, uh, we're, we're gonna try and have some fun tonight, no promises. Uh, you know, this is a big deal for us. This is the start of a whole new Glass Cannon Live experience. And you're here to see it live. And we really want this new show to like kick off a, a new experience for everybody for the, for, for the live shows. You know, if this was the old live show, I'd probably start off by making really mean jokes about these guys. It's true. <laughs> true. You know? Do it anyway! I'd probably like say something about how Skid is really old. <laughs> how about like the color TV came out the same year he got his driver's license. I might say that. <laughs> it's not true. If this was the old glass cannon live. It's not true. <laughs> I'm glad you're not doing it. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. This is a new show. I might make jokes about Grant's size, about how he's big everywhere except for where it counts, but I'm not going to do that <laughs> in the new show. I'm not going to do it, Grant. Where it counts, Grant. In my defense, his wife is here, and she told me that in confidence before the show. <laughs> Angel Yao, everybody. Hey, Angel Yao, the fourth man. row. Give her, take us, yeah, there she is, woo! She's so embarrassed of me, she wouldn't take my last name. <laughs> oh. Smart woman. <laughs> if this was the old Glass Cannon Live, I might even stoop so low to make fun of Matthew's lack of commitment to the business. Can you believe that? <laughs> Can you believe that I would do that? I, I, I might even go so far to talk about how in the last five hours of content we've recorded, Matthew was only awake for one hour of it. <laughs> it's true. That is that just is, a that factual is statement. That is factual. He fell asleep in the car yesterday when we were driving up to Griffith Park Observatory. It was really, it was really cute. <laughs> There's a couple episodes you'll be like, wow, Matthew was really quiet. It's because he was sleeping like a lazy giraffe in his chair. <laughs> like four episodes. Uh, and I would never deign to stoop so low. You don't kick someone when they're down, is what my parents always told me. So I would never make fun of Joe's giant, gross, balding Irish head. I wouldn't do it. Because this is a new Glass Cannon Live experience. Wow. And we're not going to go there. How could you even tell when he was wearing that hat? <laughs> you see? You can't tell. You can't tell. Exactly. What a beautiful hat. Do you think they sell those in the merch store? Well, Troy, they do. You can find them right up front. I yeah. see hats. Yeah, all right. All right. I love it. I love it. It's uh, like the new lighter. It's just hold up a right. hat. Encore. <laughs> do that improv again. Troy, hold up your hat. <laughs> but, I, no, I don't, I don't wear the merch. Uh, <laughs> I don't get high off my own supply. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, tonight marks the beginning of a new live show. A U.S. tour, if you will. And most importantly, a whole new adventure. <laughs> we are kicking off the Strange Aeons Pathfinder Adventure Path yes! tonight! Yes! We were saying at dinner, like, we're excited for the show, but Skid, you were like, there is nothing better than starting a new adventure path. Yeah, I would be equally as excited if we were just doing this at your apartment. Right, just, <laughs> or like at the Airbnb, just yeah. like, oh, oh yeah, this, yeah. that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> if only 250 people were here watching. Uh, no, but the dice rolls are real, the character deaths are permanent, everything counts from here on out. Uh, and you know, we put up a March Madness style bracket online to allow the listeners to choose what uh, classes and archetypes these idiots would play. And uh, I think it's time to reveal the results. What do you think? <laughs> no time like the present. Now, Matthew, you got the class that was voted for the most out of all brackets. Really? Like, if, if these other guys didn't get that class, it was like their second or third. It was very high. Matthew... What class are you playing? I got the Psychic Detective. Ooh. And what, uh, Ooh. what is that? That is a, an investigator, it's right? an investigator archetype. Mmm. I'm sorry we gave you a spellcaster. That's more work. 
<laughs> oh, that was a low-key sick burn. Sick burn. Is there a burn victim unit out there? <laughs> Sorry, take 1d4 points of burn damage <laughs> from that sick burn. This is uh, going to be a long night. This is going to be a long <laughs> night. We'll get to the show in about an hour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he usually yeah, does. Never you know. Uh, Skid, people were compa- campaigning for you right out of the gate to play one class and one class only, and they got their wish. Tell them what they've won. Uh, mad scientist. <laughs> mad scientist. And what class is that based on? Uh, it is an alchemist... Uh, theme? What, what is it? Archetype. 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 Yeah. Sorry, I forgot some of the terminology of the game I've been playing since I was a child. Right, right. <laughs> uh, no, it's an it's a alchemist. And I've never played an alchemist before. No. Are you so, excited to, or are you uh, worried about splash damage? Yeah, I'm really, I still don't really know how it works. Does but luckily, know this, is like a live, works? this is like a live subreddit. Here. <laughs> so they can they can yell at us in real time about how much how dumb we are and like what we're right. messing up. So. A slightly less cruel subreddit. <laughs> hopefully, slightly. Hopefully. Uh, now, Grant, both you and Joe, uh, when all the votes came in, you were tied for the same class. But since Joe had more votes for his, I let you choose your runner-up. So without revealing Joe's class, what did you get? Well, let me say, I enjoy this class a lot, but it's not so much that I enjoy this class as I enjoy picking a class that Joe would rather play than what he's got. Right. (laughs) If you're hurting him, we all win. Yeah. That's what I think the spirit of the show is. L'esprit de show in French. (laughs) Uh, So I'm playing a war priest of the disenchanter archetype. Mm. So that lets me, uh, after about 80 live shows when I hit fourth level, Uh, I'll be able to protect the group with uh, abjuration magic, and at sixth level, I can basically just dispel magic. No magic, no! (laughs) I like how you said you'll be able to protect the group when you know all those healing spells are going against your character. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I'll be able to protect the group. I can't promise what I'll do in the heat of battle. I lay on hands on myself? I can't protect the group if I can't protect myself. (laughs) First, I'm five hit points down, how can I protect the group? (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because it's true. <laughs> and then there's Joe. Joe, there were... I love you. There were 64 possible classes. They were then narrowed down to eight. What would you say, ballpark, the ranking was of the class that you are being forced to play? Well, Out of Troy, 64. Uh, in a shocking Cinderella story, my... 64th ranked class. <laughs> it would be as if Holy Cross was in the March Madness tournament <laughs> and then beat everybody else that was in the tournament. It's Bracket the Villanova. Busted. It's the Villanova of classes. It's the Villanova it's of a classes. Cinderella story. I also hate Villanova, so it's very oh, there appropriate. You go. Uh, I will be suffering through. Actually, that's not true because I'm, I'm now very excited. But I, they handed me the Hungry Ghost Monk. The Hungry Ghost Monk. Now, why were you upset about this? You went on a long tirade on a cannon fodder a long time ago about how monks are shitty. Yes. And then people wrote in and said, Joe, as usual, you're a fool. Uh, yeah, well, you also have this tendency to get one email that says something, and you're like, everybody's saying this. <laughs> and it was, like, it, was, it was multiple emails. It was like one guy or in Des Moines who was like, I love monks! <laughs> well, he spoke like, very clearly. Uh, The problem with the monk is that it stinks and it's broken and they fixed it in Unchained, but you can't play an Unchained monk if you do a Hungry Ghost monk. You called it a mad Hungry monk. Why was it mad? What? Multi-attribute dependent, right? Yeah, yeah, mad they call it. Multi-attribute dependent. Because you have to have everything and you can't wear armor. (laughs) Anyway, anyway. I, I am, I'm going to turn my story around, and then uh, I'll talk about it later. But what you guys didn't when it see first was came the up, tantrum. Tantrum. The tantrum. Tantrum I is see, right, yeah. I know Joe's children, and I have not seen them throw bigger tantrums than I saw, <laughs> saw Joe throw. He was like, I don't even have to play it. They won't even know. <laughs> it really was. I don't want to be a hungry ghost monk. They're stupid. <laughs> this Grant literally out, happened. Grant went out for a cigarette, and he came back in, and he was like, I was just looking on my phone, and uh, they can see all the results. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. <laughs> we could have lied to them. <laughs> 
Nice try, O'Brien. <laughs> Looks like it's Elder Mytho Scholar wins it. Okay. <laughs> uh, before we jump in, I, I just want to say a couple thank yous. First of all, a big thank you to our host, the Bootleg Theater. Uh, bootleg, bootleg. Bootleg, this is very exciting for us to uh, be kicking off this tour here in the City of Angels, and uh, the Bootleg has been fantastic, so uh, thank you to them. Uh, I also want to thank you guys, the audience, because I know a lot of people traveled from far away, some people live close. Uh, I know you had to wait in line for a while, which was fun for us, a pain in the butt for you. Uh, you know, it means a great deal to us that any of you would take the time to come out and uh, play with us. Uh, a little story, so like 11 years ago, I, I had this crazy idea. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a car. I didn't have any money. Uh, I bought a car I couldn't afford, and I drove uh, 3,000 miles across country to come here to LA, and I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a job, I didn't have, I had about 200 bucks in my bank account and a pocket full of dreams as they say. And uh, I slept on my buddy's couch for about a week. And then he, after a week, he was like, get the fuck out. You, gotta, you cannot stay here anymore. <laughs> and so then I was homeless. I was like literally homeless. I was sleeping in my car. I had this crazy idea. I was like, I'm gonna stay up all night and then I'm gonna go sleep on the beach. Makes sense. And just get a tan. <laughs> and I did that for a day. It, it's a bad idea. It, is. <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, I learned that the hard way. But then I was like, I was starting to get the hang of it. I was about six months in. I was starting to do a little more stand-up, starting to get some auditions, and then something happened, and I had to go back to New York. Uh, I got a show back in New York, so I moved back to New York, drove another 3,000 miles, and uh, for the past decade, I've just been throwing shit against the wall, hoping something would stick. And then one day, while well, tossing feces, <laughs> I went to my good buddy Joe, and I went to my good buddy Skid, and I said, we should do an actual play podcast. Because I think we can do something really special if we put our minds to it. And then Joe went to Matthew, and Skid went to Grant, and here we are. So, the moral of this story is keep throwing shit out there, because you never know where you'll end up. Yeah, it was also like the 10th weird idea that he came to us with. Yeah, it's like, guys, we should open a bar. Yeah. He should started. open a bar, but like all for, with gamers in mind, and we'll have board games everywhere. And we're like, all right. I still think that's a great idea. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and the TVs in the bar, you'd be able to play video games on those TVs yeah. while enjoying a pint of your local ale. <laughs> One of these days. Okay, in addition to the Patreon, we'll do a Kickstarter we'll do a for Kickstarter. the bar. <laughs> right. All right, cool. And an Indiegogo. Hey, who wants to play pretend? Yeah. yeah! Wait, I have. I have one All thing. Right. I have one thing. Though. Twist my arm. I have one thing. You have one thing. So I, those people who know me like know that I'm a I'm a generally like timid, fearful person. So and uh, in the player's guide for Strange Aunt, this is a horror themed adventure. Right. And so one of the things that says like if uh, check with your, your your players to see if there's anything they're not cool with, you know, and everything. And that's important for anything to get consent for like with the mm -hmm. kind of game you're playing. I don't want to make light of it, but there are a few things. I have a truncated list of things that I would like you to avoid that scare me too much <laughs> I'm, if you want me to continue playing in these live I'm shows. taking note, go ahead. Centipedes of all sizes. <laughs> it doesn't matter how big or small they are, I'm, I, I'm really scared of them. Centipedes, okay. All right, uh, black widow spiders. Black widow spiders. Uh, widow spiders of any other hue or fair game, and I like spiders generally, but no black widow spiders. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kodiak bears. Kodiak bears. <laughs> uh, because they're the largest bears, that just and therefore makes sense. the most frightening. Mm -hmm. uh, palmetto bugs, because there's a lot in uh, the apartment. I gotta talk to you about that, Grant. Okay. Um, Sorry. And then any re and really long needles. No needles. No needles. Short needles are okay. Short needles are fine. Okay, I've taken good. a lot of shots in my life. It's fine. Okay. Uh, especially with uh, my no hair. epidurals for Skid. No, no, no epidurals. But like, I've, I'm a really Did avid uh, heroin enthusiast. So like, I'm, I'm all cool with like regular size needles. <laughs> any references to the following? Uh, Harry Chapin songs. <laughs> Not just Cats in the Cradle, any other Harry Chapin song. It was raining hard in Frisco. All right, I'm gonna walk out right now. <laughs> we need Skid, Matthew. Shut sorry, up. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, Jim Croce's songs. Okay. Uh, no, fuck you. Seriously. <laughs> Any fucking folk music. I grew up, the house I grew up in, my parents and their stupid hippie friends would come on Friday nights and have folk music night. And I wanted to 
Uh, cut the mic, cut the mic. And, uh, and any, any reference at all to the uh, Sega Saturn? <laughs> because I loved it and it makes me sad that it went away. <laughs> all right, that's fair, that's fair. There was one other sentence I wanted to point out to you in the Strange Eons, or Aeons, Player's Guide. There may be casualties along the way, but in the end, Strange Aeons is not meant to give a ruthless GM blank check to kill off the party in every other encounter. <laughs> Just wanted to make that clear to you. As with all Adventure Paths, the story presented in Strange Aeons unfolds best when there is a continuing threads of characters mm. from start to end. So mm. keep Baron alive forever. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I got a lot going on. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> um, let's jump into the imagination sphere. We're doing it. We're doing We're it. We're really doing it. This oh, is no. happening. All right. Light comes up on a child. Looks like he's sitting in front of a television set playing a Sega Genesis. <laughs> He's covered in centipedes. All of a sudden you hear, if I could have time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do. And then a Kodiak bear, shot out of him. nowhere. Out of nowhere. Jumps out of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Skid, be careful, there's black widow spiders everywhere. <laughs> it's an old theater. <laughs> it's an old theater. I can't tell if Skid's actually upset or not. <laughs> that's that's what a great I'm not mad, I'm frightened already. <laughs> okay. I'm angry I'm that I'm mad, so scared, I'm scared already. It's too early. <laughs> now I know how to get you. You're all lost in a city you faintly recognize. You look around and you don't remember how you got there or who the three other people are standing next to you. In fact, you don't even know who you really are. All around you is a wall of like sickly yellow fog tumbling through the crumbling brick walls of various alleyways that surround you. One by one, the alleys and the buildings start to disappear as they become enveloped by the fog like some jaundiced flash flood. You look ahead and you see that one alley has yet to be overcome. It splits, it curves to the left and to the right. But behind you, as the mist starts to swell, the sound of footsteps begin to emanate. They're slow at first, but somehow keeping pace with this careening, hungry wave that is pushing you toward the alleyway. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh my, God. my God. Wait, what? Roll for initiative. <laughs> Holy shit. Roll, like a roll, like a roll, like a roll, like a roll. My God. <laughs> yeah! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, all right. I did all right. Uh, Joseph Patrick O'Brien. 11. 11. This Joe goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Acapa de Casa. Nine. MC <laughs> Funky Stuff. Nine. What about you, Grant? Nine as well. Ooh. Who has the higher initiative bonus? I'm plus two. Plus oh. three. Oh. Ooh. Shocker. Beauty before age. <laughs> and did you add your modifier? I did add. But let's roll off. <laughs> uh, what about Skidmaster Flash? Uh, I'm also an 11, like Joe. Ooh. I have a plus six to my initiative. Ooh. <laughs> He seeds the floor. After you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 after you. All right. Matthew, you're standing there next to all of them. What does your character look like? Describe her physical appearance. She is a lady of about 70 years. Mm -hmm. She's very short. She's, got, she's about five foot one. Mm -hmm. She's got a tangle of gray hair. <laughs> With gray, white hair with gray streaks in it, and she's got piercing gray eyes that look into the yellow fog. Mm. 
Who is she played by? She's played by the wonderful character actress, Lynn Cohen. The amazing Lynn Cohen, and I am shocked we got her. She is a grand dame of the theater. She's, She's amazing. She's an amazing actress. Uh, Joe, what does your character look like? Skid, hold off on this one for a second. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm holding off, yeah. For sure. This fucking monk <laughs> is standing there bare-chested with a tasteful loincloth. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's cold. Wait Damn for the, it. <laughs> wait for the picture. <laughs> to go with the theme of I didn't want to play a monk, and I certainly didn't want to play a hungry ghost monk, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to pile on everything I don't want to play, and then I'm going to challenge myself to play it. And in doing so, I got so pumped. <laughs> you are looking at a hulking, shredded, full orc, lawful evil, hungry ghost monk. Bra Wait, what did we say with the color of his skin? I, I talked to Grant copper. about it. I, believe I said a copper and Grant was like, I'm kind of an expert. At first I pulled up the Pantone chart because yeah. I am an artist. Yeah. But then, because I knew that I am a connoisseur of crayons, but I knew that Joe was a connoisseur of crowns. <laughs> I brought up the entire sure. spectrum of colors available in a 120 count Crayola box. <laughs> and we settled upon antique brass. Antique brass coloring of skin, shaved head except for a ponytail that comes out of the top, which is folded back into a ring like samurai style. And he's just like his muscles are bursting out of his skin, and he's played by Jake Gyllenhaal. There he is. <laughs> your wife's gonna wonder why you have 40 pictures of that on your iPad. <laughs> she knows, she knows. She was I, like, I can't choose which one. I, I already had that picture. <laughs> that was it my was backdrop before the coincidence. Uh, Grant, physical appearance, an actor. You see a sinewy, serious-looking, steely, brown-eyed, human war priest, played by Special Agent Dale Cooper, Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> there he is. Looking suspicious. Look at him, investigating. Ready to see Dennis Hopper do crazy things in the next room. Blue Velvet fans, anyone? All right. Um, and uh, he, is, he is there, he is ready, he has rolled a nine, and he's wondering what's gonna happen next. <laughs> and Skid, talk to me about your character. What does he look like? Uh, he's tall, six foot seven, lean. Uh, he's got a wild, kind of absent look in his eyes, and half of his face is covered in a gigantic burn scar leaving with patches of hair on the left side of his head. And he is played by uh, phenomenal character actor, Bruce Spence. Oh. How would we know this, this actor? Uh, he plays the gyrocopter captain in uh, Road Warrior. Uh, yeah, he's been in, uh, he was in the extended <laughs> version of Return of the King as the Mouth of Sauron. Oh, he played oh, the Mouth of Sauron. Uh, yes. Oh, that guy is so scary. Yes, it's awesome. Did you know, little known fact, that's what Orphos Norkim was based on? That's a lie. Oh. That's what you told me. <laughs> that's a lie in a you scene. You made me watch that extended scene. No. <laughs> in your basement. He was in, he was in uh, the third bad Star Wars movie. Oh. Yeah, he played one of the, like, He was one of the dudes weird diplomats. That. Yeah, anyway. He's been in a bunch of stuff. And there he is. And there he is. And The Matrix, one of the bad Matrix movies also, which is what this is from. He was also in Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. Which oh, I've never was? seen. I've never seen any of those movies, so I wouldn't have known him. All righty then. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll talk about this later. Yeah. Uh, Skid, it's your action to move first. You have this fog surrounding you, an alleyway in front of you, splitting to the left, splitting to the right. You don't recognize the people around you. You also don't know who you are. What do you do? Uh, so my character kind of is like looking at the fog itself and he kind of like grasps like a, a handful of it and like tries to like 
taste it. Like he puts his mouth. Stick your hands into the fog. Yeah. And try to taste it. He waits for the feedback to die down, and then it's kind of cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and he then kinda, he holds. And he just holds. He holds. Joe. Joe. <laughs> Interesting choice. <laughs> what do you do? Do do do. do. <laughs> is this deliberate? That actually or is this freaked like a... me out. <laughs> If I could have time Would you? In a bottle. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> you got me here right now. Uh, quick note for anyone that is not intentional. Turn off your uh, broadcast and receiving from Roll20 so that we don't get that ah. feedback. Ah, is that, that was nice. actually have the map behind us. It'll be fun. Amateur hour. I think it's me. Do I have it? And you need to hit reconnect after you hit that. Oh, and then geez. there will be no feedback. But this you already should have muted so. your computer, so whoever didn't is fired! It's me, it's me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> How Damn good it, it wasn't me. Don't look at any of these pictures. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> It's a real professional operation. Know, yeah, we're we're really doing it live. <laughs> <laughs> do it live. Joe, what okay. do you want to do? Uh, uh, you said there was footsteps coming from a direction? Yeah, or? dung, 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 from the mist behind you. From the mist behind you. <sighs> Alleyway splits to the left, to the right. <sighs> Two huge tusks coming up from below. Protrude, protruding lower jaw. He looks around, he looks at his hands. There's crusted blood on them. He turns, he's... He sees a tattoo wrapped around his arm. In orc, it says, one in darkness, one in death. There's no idea who he is, what this is. He turns towards the footsteps, sees these people, is confused, and immediately moves towards the footsteps. You walk into the mist. Into the mist. <laughs> you, you walk into the mist? Directly into the mist. You walk into the mist and you are immediately surrounded by this yellow fog and you look back and you think that the people standing next to you, you should still be able to see them because they're now only about 10 feet away, but they're completely gone. However, in the distance you see like hulking figures that look like they're far away and then way too close. He lashes out at them. Just punches. Yeah, just the, the, the air. It gets nothing, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, you just... <laughs> nothing. It disappears. Natural it looks one. like it's even farther again. Uh, you're in the mist. Grant, what do you do? My character looks afraid. Just, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sees this hulking orc walk off in the shadows. Sees this crazy gyrocopter pilot eating his hair, follows the gyrocaptor pilot, uh, and uh, thinks a second, and then says, there's only one way to do it. We have to confront it, and walks into the same direction that Joe's character walked. Walks into the mist. Yes. You too, immediately entering the mist, you lose all sense of direction. You don't see anyone around you. You saw him enter the mist, and you think you should be right beside him. Right. You don't see him either, but you see these strange shapes just forming all over the place. Matthew. Uh, so she sniffs the air. <laughs> Does she recognize the smell? Yes, it smells like hummus. Oh. <laughs> hummus and chips! Hummus, hummus, oh. and, hummus chips. and chips! Hummus and chips! crossbow! In that case, <laughs> uh, I think she, she, she hobbles forward. She can't move very fast, but she hobbles forward into the mist. Um, she loves hummus. She just walks. <laughs> Got him. She just can't resist really good hummus. Yeah. <laughs> she loves hummus. <laughs> it's in her backstory. Um, I don't know my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how do you walk forward? On her legs. Does she have... Anything on her person? Oh, does she have her cane? So she goes to put her hand down. Everybody roll a d4. Shit. <laughs> one. 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 I don't have a d4. Here, take guaranteed, one. <laughs> guaranteed four. Three. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I don't have a d4. 
Skid, Matthew, and Joe, each of your characters have one item from their character sheet on them. You go to put your hand down, and your cane isn't there, and then your cane appears. Okay. But you have no armor, no equipment, no anything else. Joe, you can pick one thing. Skid, you can pick one thing. Grant, you can pick three things. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh man. Typical. Come on. The I rich get richer. <laughs> <laughs> So Skid's character just stands there. Joe and Grant's character enter the mist, and Matthew's uh, woman hobbles forward. The alley wall, Matthew, around you, up ahead, it begins to sag. The battered bricks above you are like slumping over the path, practically blotting out the uh, bruised twilight sky overhead. Behind you, only yellow mists clouds the way you just came. Those two people that were standing next to you, gone, gone, as far as you can see. And the other man just like eating or trying to eat or grasp at this mist, because he's weird. <laughs> it, well, it smells like hummus. It smells like hummus. <laughs> Again, up ahead, you see that this grimy cobblestone path splits, but this time it looks like one route goes uphill while the other just recklessly descends. Behind you, the yellow fog and that relentless sound of footsteps is growing ever closer. Skid, what do you do? Uh, so my character hears the footsteps, and so can he? Can he see Matthew's character? So Matthew's Matthew's, Matthew's character, character walked away from the mist. They okay. walked into it. And Joe's character and Grant's character both moved towards the yep. footsteps. and they're gone. Oh. So he like looks up like from his face, he's just like, oh, I liked them. And like he starts like kind of wandering off in their direction. <laughs> wandering off into the mist. They seem like pleasant folk. And he starts wandering off <laughs> towards where they went. So you also wander off into the mist. Same thing. Immediately lose your sense of direction. In fact, you wander into the mist, and seconds later you reappear about 20 feet away on another side of the mist, like far away from where you were. It makes no sense. You stepped in one way and reappeared elsewhere. Joe, what are you doing? Uh, he's, he's looking for the source of the footsteps. I mean, yeah. He's trying to stand. He can't see any of the other characters, right? Nothing. Yeah. You see these shapes closer, farther away. Closer. Where am I? Who are you? Looking around at these shapes that are coming at him, what do they say in response? Oh, shit. <laughs> Grant. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus doesn't exist in Galarian. <laughs> but he exists in my heart, Troy. Uh, uh, my character is just terrified. <sighs> and he doesn't see the orc. He doesn't see the gyrocopter pilot. He doesn't see anything, so he's going to attempt to trace his way back through the yellow fog. You trace your way back. And get out of there. So you only walked probably five, maybe ten feet in, and you figure, I can just walk back the way I came, and you walk, and the mist is getting thicker and thicker, and it feels like you're walking through soup. Matthew, what is your character doing? I think she just stops walking. Right. You look, everyone's gone. Everyone's gone. And something within her tells her that if she just were to think about this, maybe she'll figure things out. So she's going to sit down on the ground. Sits on the ground. Yeah. Cross-legged. Cross-legged. Lays her cane across her lap. And thinks. And just waits. She'll hold. This mist now mere steps behind you as you're sitting on the ground finally parts. And you hear something come out of the mist behind you. Do you look? I look. You just see it first, like a head pop out, and it's this mask of gray rags oh. emerging. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't on your list, Skid. Oh, no, I Calm know. down. I'm putting it on the list now. <laughs> 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 This mask, it has strips of something fleshier than fabric, 
like worming and constricting across a body that's like almost human-like, but like way too lean and far too flexible and long-limbed, gauzy ray, gray ribbons just start reaching out at you like tendrils. They're reaching for like less doubtful flesh to cling oh. to. Less doubtful. Meanwhile, Joe, you feel a razor come at you in the back. Oh, no. Natural 20. Oh. <laughs> We're doomed. What's with the cheering? We are so doomed. Come on. <laughs> to confirm. I don't even want to tell you how many hit points I have. This is, Joe, this is bad news. This is... This is incredibly bad news. Yeah, I, uh, 18 to confirm. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'll do it. I'm a shitty monk, that'll do it. You take 35 points of damage. <laughs> G- great live show joke, Troy. <laughs> 35 points of damage. That's permadeath. That's permadeath. <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> Look at his face! Put Jillian Hall up there! <laughs> Get so him up there! <laughs> Fuck you, Troy! <laughs> <laughs> I am far too ripped to go down in the first swing! Uh, okay. Are you permanently dead? Yeah, I have 10 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> but wait! Do you have a 26 con? <laughs> because then you'd be fine. It's a great point. You'd be just barely alive if you have a 26 con. Tell me, Joe. <laughs> well, Joe, you have a round to roll up a new character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I told you how shitty the monk was. I told you. I wanted to punch one time. <laughs> you, you did. You just didn't hit anything. That's true. Look Factually it, correct. <laughs> Factually correct. Skid, it's your turn. <laughs> I, so I, I didn't see any of this, right? No, you didn't see anything. Right. So I'm just like wandering like around. <laughs> I'm, <so laughs> I'm going to go sit in the audience. <laughs> yeah, you might as well. Get enjoy the show, Joe. <laughs> enjoy enjoy uh, the show. I'm just is, there a seat? is there an empty seat for Joe? <laughs> enjoy the rest of the show. Um... <laughs> So I'm just, so he's just like kind of like looking at his feet like as he walks and like kind of realizing that he's sort of walking in circles without mm-hmm. realizing it, uh, without intending to, and uh, he just starts giggling to himself, like, <laughs> and he starts like kind of doing a little jig as he's like walking and like taking great joy out of like ending up in the same place as he's walking around. <laughs> now that's scary. <laughs> I'm putting that on my list. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll skip Joe. Grant, what does your character do? I did all this work. Unable to find anything, my character looks down and sees that it's more fog behind him and goes, ah! <laughs> and then attempts a survival check to see if he can get out of this. Can sure, roll a survival happen? check. We're talking about a 10. No, no, you don't have any idea, you look around you and these shapes seem to be all around you and they're converging on you. Once in a while you'll feel like something on the back of your neck. Feels like a little blade or something just tickling you. Do you like that kind? Don't actually touch him. It's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) This is really helping my role play, thank you. (laughs) I finally feel like I'm the character. And he weeps and tries to walk back. Just cries and backs up, and you feel like you back up against something. Oh. Oh. And you feel just two small, oddly small hands. (laughs) Oh, no! No! This is on my list! Just wrap themselves around your waist. Oh, Oh, my God. Long arms, small hands? Yep. Oh, Oh, no! Matthew, what do you do? Donald Trump! <laughs> We're having fun, huh? <laughs> so I see this this rag, oh fleshy. God. It face. just comes out of the mist. This thing, it's just writhing, lanky, weird, and it's just walking slowly up to you. And I imagine you're sitting there and you just look. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Come on, man. You don't need that. <laughs> so she's gonna, she's gonna kind of stare at it and tilt her head and like, oh. And she's gonna reach out with her mind and roll a will save. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Just oh, wow. reach out with her mind, roll a will save. Na oh. Jesus. Natural Thomas and Chips. Natural 20. Another natural 20. You take one point of damage. With a mind thrust. Point oh. taken. So you see it just kind of walk towards you and shake it off and keep coming towards you. Roll a perception check. Uh, 16. As you mind thrust, its head kind of whips back. And then as it whips forward, blood splatters on the wall oh. next to you. Oh. oh. And you look at the wall, and the blood spattered in a very strange pattern, like it spells out the word me. Me? Me. Oh. <laughs> She's going to hobble up to standing and face it. And turns around. Yeah. Skid, what do you do? No! I freak out! I fucking freak out! Um, yeah, I think he's still, I mean, he's still just kind of like dancing his little recursive jig. It's like, <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> and he As just kind of like yeah. stops. And he just kind of looks up like he's trying to remember something he's forgotten. And he just stands there like that. Stands there looking off into this yellow fog. And as you're standing there, you get this really, really strange taste in your mouth. Like something is leaking into it. <laughs> but you don't see a source. And it's starting to like fill your mouth up to the point where you almost can't breathe. Meanwhile, Grant, these long arms and tiny hands <laughs> attempt to grapple you. And my character is just praying that it's not there. It's not there, it's not there, it's not there. The Lady of Graves protect me, the Lady of Graves protect me, the Lady of Graves. Goes to grab you. 35 against CMD. Just a myth. No, it's... it's <laughs> The small little hands wrap around you, and then you feel like one, two, three, four, five, six spindly legs wrap around oh, you as well. No. Oh, no. It then makes two free claw attacks. Uh, 17. Uh, that's a hit. And a uh, 18, oh, also oh. a hit. Uh, that is gonna be, f uh, hold on. 14 points of damage. Uh, I'm dying and bleeding on the ground. And then it goes to rend you? Oh, rend town? No. You're taking me to rend town rend already? I'm taking you to rend town. And it hits for, uh, hold on. God. <laughs> 22 more points of damage. What is going damage. on? Come on. Explain yourself. I'll, I'll see you, Lady of Graves. The boneyard awaits me. Claw, claw, rend. Dead. Oh, man. Oh. Skid, roll a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Natural one. Drink. It's a f yeah, drink. Drink, everybody. Uh, that's a five. Nat five. All right. Yeah. You just feel a wash of blood splash across your body. <laughs> and you look down, and you see the word up appear on your chest. <laughs> so he looks, he's like shocked. He's like, oh, he's like taken aback by, by the splash. It like breaks him out of his reverie. And he looks down, he sees the word. Which way is it facing? Is it like upside down so I can read it? Or yeah, yeah, like... it's facing right at you. So okay, he's so like, like up? So he kind of like tilts his head up and like looks up above him. And what does he see? You look up above you and you see Grant's character suspended in the air, upside down, dead, and his mouth just rolls open, 
and a voice comes out of it that doesn't sound like it should come from him. <gasps> and it just says, Up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Matthew, what do you do? What oh, man. <laughs> do I hear that? Nope. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that movie was so sad the first 10 minutes. I started crying. <laughs> Remembering that old man and his wife. So my character is going to put her cane down in front of her and put both hands on it and look at the, the raggy, fleshy face and say, you don't scare me. And she's going to close her eyes. And she closes her eyes. Next round. Skid, you're standing there. You look up at that body. Up. The word up on your chest. And then you feel this small tickle on the small of your back. And then in an instant, the tickle turns into a burning, searing pain. Oh. Like some sort of blade is cutting you from the base of your tailbone all the way up to that soft spot right at the bottom of your cranium. Oh. You want me to show you where that soft spot is? No, 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 don't, do, <laughs> don't you, no, don't you dare to the no, <laughs> And you just feel your back open up, splitting you oh, in half. Oh, no. As your insides oh, no. leak out of the back of you oh. and you die. I hate that feeling. <laughs> oh, no. Your eyes close. Oh. And you just hear, some giant sound next to you, like a body just landed next to you. And you hear, me. Do you open your eyes? Sure. <laughs> and you see Joe's character, dead, stuck to the wall, upside down. But his head is where his leg should be. His leg is where his arm should be. He has another leg coming out of his chest, fingers coming out of his eyes. Everything is where it should not be. Most intriguing. Roll a will save. Oh, boy. Nine. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> Your nose begins bleeding. Oh, no. And as it bleeds, you notice in front of you a new word is starting to appear on the wall, like far far ahead of you as the blood coming out of your nose starts to defy gravity and like drip horizontally toward the wall to oh spell out this word. Oh my God. But then you feel like pressure inside your head starting to build and you can feel your eyes, your brains, your gums, everything in your side, your skull start to swell like they're trying to escape your head cavity. More blood fills in the shape on the wall to form the word Wake. Oh, As you oh see God. that, you hear a very soft noise to your left. And you look at that same strange, ragged creature just standing there, right next to you, staring. And he just gently touches you on your forehead. And you're like, blap! And your head explodes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All of you immediately regain consciousness. What? And you realize that you're locked in a grimy cell in a dungeon you don't recognize. Matthew, your character still can taste blood if you touch your nose. You still have a bloody nose. But all of you, all of you are alive. My head is still intact. Your head is still intact. That's good. Joe, your character is alive. <laughs> Grant, you're alive. Skid, you're alive. Hello. Uh, <laughs> we made it. We made it. <laughs> you're locked in this cell. You have none of your possessions on you, none of your weapons, none of your armor, equipment, nothing. You look nearby, and you can see another person is locked in the cell with you, and it's one of the people from that dream. In that same moment, you also get this sick feeling that there's more people in this room oh, no. than just the two of you. Oh, no. You hear a voice cry out in the claustrophobic dark. Wake up, damn it! Bars separate you from this stranger, a struggling human 
with split lips and skin covered in a map work of fresh red lines. Heavy ropes lash the man to a splintery work table. Another figure, unsettlingly thin and wearing a blood-smeared doctor's coat, just casually circles the table, stopping every so often to scrutinize one of the man's wounds. Maybe picks up a really long needle. Oh, come on! <laughs> come on! Holds it in the light and looks at it for a second. Or selects another object from a sideboard of, like, blades and pins. Currently, she takes a pair of broken pruning spears, uh, shears, rather, uh, and that glints in the dull light of this lamp suspended over the table. That's about right. Was it something I said? <laughs> yeah. Must have been the needle. <laughs> <laughs> she just spins this thing and the light hits it and then with careless cruelty, this doctor draws the blade across the bound man's bare thigh and he releases a tortured wail as she does so. None of you recognize the man screaming on the table. In fact, as you get your bearings, each of you realizes you don't recognize anyone in the room and you have no recollection of who you are. Let's go to the map. Oh. Um, oh. oh, I have it right here. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. <laughs> I got here. No, sorry. There here it go. is. <laughs> oh. You're, in, you're oh. underwater. Yeah. You're a, a, a sea monster attacks you. <laughs> Total darkness. Oh. One moment. Please. Skid's character is locked in a cell with Matthew's character, and Joe's character is locked in a cell with Grant's character. Can you uh, unplug it, Skid, and try plugging it? We just did it. Oh, dear. Oh, that stinks. Well, poop. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Here we go. There we go. Hey! Hey! hey. All right. We got All a map! Right. Um, let me roll a perception check. Twenty-one. Ooh. Twenty-four. Oh. Am I trying to locate traps? No. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Ah. Everyone except Grant. <laughs> you see this smaller table uh, next to the one that the man is on, it has a bunch of sharp instruments, obviously none of which are designed uh, to be used on living flesh. A gardening trowel, forks, several long pieces of broken glass or metal, and, other, and the other uh, half of the blade of the uh, pruning shears. Other than that, the only thing you see in the room is a door on the, we'll call it the, East wall, rubble to the left, and a bunch of sacks near the door. With the exception of Grant, you also notice that the doctor, this woman walking around the table, has a ring of keys hanging from her belt. But even as she rounds the table, it's not like she comes close enough to your cell to do anything about it. Each of the cells has a big heavy lock attached to it. What are you guys doing? I mean, I am like, I, my guy gets up, immediately looks at Grant's character, and this human, uh, and he's just like, how did I get here? When did I get here? Uh, I don't know when you got here exactly. Uh, but I can tell you that I don't want to be here at all. Not one bit. Weak, pathetic human. <sighs> he turns, grabs the bars, and looks out. He sees this woman. Mm -hmm. He's like, you! Who are you? Where am I? Screaming out into the hall. She His voice echoing down the empty cells. She turns on you very slowly. What does she look like? Her she... face, her facial region. Her facial region. <laughs> Just narrow the, it down, I guess that's Joe. an important question to ask in Strange Aeons. She looks, yeah, yeah she, uh, like I said, she's like a little thin, a little gaunt, 
uh, slightly emaciated. She has longish red hair, maybe like 30, late 30s, early 40s. Uh, and she's wearing this long white coat. As you get to the bars and you yell that, she just slowly turns at you and she's like, pipe down. You'll have your turn soon enough. Oh, no. <sighs> and then she turns back to the guy and just starts cutting him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like He's going to do a strength check. She's like check agonizing the where to make the next cut. Like, should I do it here? Over here? Maybe here? He's going to launch himself into the door. I mean, it's locked. It's a locked door, right? Is there yeah. any lock on it? He's going to launch himself into it, do a, a strength check. Okay. And break strength, check. strength check. Natural two. <laughs> Natural one. So you launch, launch yourself against the thing, and you're like, uh. <laughs> See? God damn it. Uh. Uh, He's and you, so strong. And you, it actually, like, the, the, you realize the door is pretty strong, and you, you topple to the ground. And she walks up to you. She's like, I said quiet. And as she says that, her face looks exactly like yours for a second. Oh, wow. Oh. And then it goes back to her face. You fool. I, I, if we stay quiet just for a little while, maybe they'll forget we're here at all. I, your strength means nothing here, orc. What did you call me? I called you an orc. That's what you are, aren't you? You called me a fool. He grabs his neck. You're worried about racial inequities when we're tied in a vault <laughs> with a woman cutting into legs? I think it's time we all got along, don't you? He squeezes his fingers deeper into the skin of his neck and just sort of like... His eyes widen and he releases his neck. His face kind of drops and he closes his eyes for a moment and just sort of like centers himself. What's going on in the other cell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile in cell B. Uh, so my character's gonna walk to the, 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 the uh, bars and say, excuse me, would you mind letting us out? She just turns <laughs> and looks at you. Roll diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and looks back at her work and slices along this guy's leg. And she's gonna like wave her hand to try to get the, the, the slicer woman's attention. Mm -hmm. and. All of a sudden, one of the implements on the, uh, the table lifts up into the air. And she directs it to like, be right in front of the doctor's face. And she goes, I asked a polite question. <laughs> well, uh, That was Mei Chan, by the way. Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, <what>? Damn it, Matthew! <laughs> <laughs> you brought this on yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, Joe's gonna, gonna roll. roll. Get, Get ready, ready for that one. <laughs> one. Here's a fun. <laughs> Way to play to the crowd, Joe. Oh my God, guys! My uh, iPad somehow got mortally destroyed. How did that happen? <laughs> Just now? Just now, yeah. At least I can still read. How did that Whoa, happen? How did and that happen? Take it out on you guys. I have no idea. I just Evil no spirits. Idea. You've summoned them with the force of your words. Perhaps yes. it was the ghost <laughs> it must of be Harry a, Chapin. It must be a rival actual play <laughs> podcast. Yes. Talk amongst yourself. They were who might be sabotaging me. Uh, all right. What did you get, Grant? Nine. Nine for... Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Twelve. Oh. Oh. I looked at the number oh, wrong. Oh, twelve. How convenient. Uh, what about you, Skid Vicious? Eight. Eight for Skid. Okay. Joseph O'Brien? Two. <laughs> <laughs> You're the two of this podcast. <laughs> uh, <Aww. what? laughs> it's really rough. It's too much? <laughs> we've, uh, we've gone blue. Uh, Matthew? 19. 19. Good start for the guy that started all of this. Yep. All right. Uh, Matthew, you have those shears pointed directly at this woman's face. What do you, you want to do? You want to try and intimidate? Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> I shall try diplomacy. Uh, it's like, I don't wish to resort to violence, but I do seem to be in here against my will, and you are hurting that man. So if you would please kindly let us out, I would be much obliged. Roll diplomacy. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> <Killed her. laughs> she just plucks the instrument out of the air and then shoves it right in the guy's chest. Oh, no. 
directly, like right below the navel, and just digs it deeper and deeper in. And the guy's like, ah, 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 screaming violently. Grant, what do you do? I have no equipment, right? Uh, you have nothing. You have three pieces of equipment, don't you? Or you well, have nothing before. again. Yeah, nothing. That was the dream. That twas the dream, Joe. My character does what Grant would like to do right now, which is pee himself. <laughs> Roll Don't. a pee check. Uh, <laughs> 17. You, you made it. <laughs> um, Come on. Yeah. There's really, I mean, I, I could attempt to rattle, but I think <sighs> the great lady makes no decisions on whether a death is just or not. She just ferries their souls, ferries their souls, and cowers. He cowers. Skid. Um, so my character, like, rushes up to the bars, like, grabs, like, presses his face against it and, like, is twisting so he can look at what's happening on the table. He said, what are you doing there? Oh, that looks painful, all right. (laughs) 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 Not really, like, what are you doing? (laughs) No. And she's not even looking at you. She's just digging these shears deeper and deeper into this guy's lower abdomen. Oh, hang in there, mate. (laughs) (laughs) Hang in there. Always darkest before the dawn. (laughs) (laughs) Always darkest before the dawn. That's great. (laughs) The sun will come out. Tomorrow, <laughs> let bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow <laughs> there'll be some. Come on, everybody! <laughs> Joe, roll a perception check for your character. Come on, come on, come on. 21. Yeah. 21. Yeah. DC 20. Yes! While he's singing, and he's cowering, and she's made a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> You notice that the guy laying on the table, as he's getting stabbed to death, he like wiggles a leg free of his blood-soaked bindings, all the while like keeping his eye on you. And with his last bit of energy, he desperately kicks at the doctor in the back, and she hurtles right against your cell. What do you do? (laughs) (laughs) Yes! Yes! Hunter! Oh! he reaches through the bars yeah. and just grabs her head. <laughs> Roll a uh, CMD check. Come you, on. Joe, come, come on, on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on, come on, Joe. You just need to succeed at a dice roll. Come on, come on. Fuck. Wait. Yeah, wait. 12. <laughs> She slips through my grasp. She uh, just lands against the cell. You try to grab her, but you, you fail. Oh. You Joe. <laughs> Joe. You Joe her pretty hard. <laughs> Do you want to take your move action? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank New you. round, Matthew. What do you do? Matthew is, not Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> Matthew's character as she's called on the, the roll 20, yes. uh, is going to p- point at the shears again and then pointing at the woman and fling it at her. Fling the shears. All right, roll the hip. Uh, that's a good point. I'll do that first. Uh, 21. Woo. 21. That's a hit. Yeah. 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 That'll play. That'll play, Matthew. And you take three points of damage. All right. Beautiful. Where the shears hit her, like in their side, in her chest, or leg. They don't, they don't pierce her. It's a projectile. So just, I feel like just, like, just like smacks, smacks against her across her. the face. Three points of smack damage. The <laughs> uh, smack damage stack. Grant still cowering? No, not cowering anymore. He sees this as an opportunity. A message from the great lady herself. Yes, because it's up against your. She's up against your cell as well. Grabs her. Oh no. In uh, eleven. Fails as well. Moves up to the cell, tries to grab, fails. Yes. Yeah. Someone yeah, grab the has keys. an idea. I don't think I would have grabbed the keys either with an Stole my thunder. <laughs> oh. Skid, it is your character's turn. I, gr- oh, yeah, I can't grab the keys, right? She's on the other oh. cell, yeah. Oh, I- oh get her! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get her, mate! 
<laughs> he yells, get her! Get her! <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something that could be helpful. <laughs> but I don't quite know what it is. And he just kind of looks away. He's like, no, but do get her though. Get her. Yeah. yeah. She spins around after both Joe's character and Grant's character fail to grapple her. She spins around and as she spins around, the guy on the table with probably his last action in life kicks her square in the face. And this knocks her on the ground and the keys fall off of her and Ooh. slide right up to the edge of your cell, Skid and Matthew. Oh, wow. She stands up that was infuriated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but in the chaos, it doesn't look like she notices that she lost the key. However, she wheels on the stranger, grabs another long blade in one hand, a needle in the other Skid. Oh, and long. shoves it directly below his Adam's apple oh, and just oh, starts God. digging her oh, way down. God. Oh. Joe, what do you got? Uh, so she's out of reach now. She's out of reach now. Um, I should probably move her on the map. Uh, I'm just going to hold, because the keys went the other way, right? Yeah. So he's going to stare at the keys and like see who picks them up and see what they do next. Joe's going to hold. Joe's going <laughs> to hold. New round, Matthew, what do you got? The keys are within reach. Uh, so she looks at her hand very strangely, like she didn't know she could do that. Mm -hmm. But she just reaches for the keys and they come right into her Shoo. hand. Yep. Force keys. As you, like, nice. And she shoves it in her pocket. Just shoves it in her pocket yeah. for a rainy day. For a rainy day. <laughs> yeah. Oh. For a time when you might need those keys. Right. In a exactly. distant future. <laughs> you, ne you never know we're going to need those keys. You never know. Rainy day. Right. She just can't to, hurt us when we're in the cells. That's, we're so safe in here. We're yes. so safe. Yes. It's always good to have some rainy day keys. That's right. <laughs> uh, Grant. Um, my character cowers. And, <gasps> and then you hear <laughs> a sotto voice come out of his mouth. <gasps> and my dry, rasping whisper fills a creature of four fewer hit dice with unnatural dread. So oh, make, a, make a will save. A will save. Yes. All right. I rolled a... Oh, wait a minute. Natural one. Oh, you... Ooh. Hey, Whoa. Whoa. That's a fail. Nice. Um, you must make... Oh, so you're shaking for one round. You can't do anything. Shaking. All right. Shake, shake, shake. Skid. What do you do? You see the keys land there. You see this older woman grab the keys and shove them into her pocket. Oh. Uh, so he looks at his cellmate. He's like, ooh, what are you going to do with him then? <laughs> I was going to make a decision in a minute. Ooh, can't wait to see. <laughs> <laughs> so you hold as well? I hold as well. You hold as well? Yes, I hold as well. It is the doctor's turn, and she continues for her second round, just slicing this guy apart. And you feel like she's only going to do this. Oh, she's shaking, but that's minus two. Oh. So she does it not as well. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly poorly. Her cuts are terrible. Uh, and it is Joe's turn. Joe, you held and did nothing. What do you got? He's staring now at the keys. They go into her pocket. Yeah. He's staring at her. He grips the bars to the point where he's just scraping his skin, looking at her, and he's sort of like <sighs> And he's gonna hold and be quiet and like force himself to not make any sort of fuss about it, but he's staring steely at her and at her pocket. Staring just waiting right to at see her, what she does. Yeah. Watching her. Matthew, it's a new round, it's your turn. You must feel this gaze of this orc from across the way, 15 feet away, just staring daggers at you. What I you also do? feel the badgering of people at the table. So she'll, re <laughs> so she'll, t she'll take the keys out you of You feel the badgering of like 200 plus people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to do something so interesting. strange. <laughs> and she'll, uh, she'll take the keys and unlock the door. Ding! And then use magic to send them across the way right into the orc's face. Ooh, oh, wow. like mage hand them away? <laughs> mage hand them away. Joe, you take... Four points of key to Oh no, he's dead again. <laughs> it was Mage ah. Hand. God, were those rainy day keys? We were saving those, no? <laughs> uh, all right, it is Grant's turn. Grant, you see those keys hit Joe's character in the face. <laughs> I pick the keys off the ground and I unlock the door and open it. Chum, 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 chum. The door is open. 
It is her turn again for the third round. I feel like she's only going to do this for 1D4 rounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds third like round, that, she's right. still cutting away. Is she still shaking, or is that done? That's done. No longer shaking. Joe, it's your turn. The door is open. I, he sprints out the door and goes to grab her. Goes to grab her. Grappler. All yep. right. Roll another failed check. 16. Failed check. <laughs> what? This unarmored doctor or CMD, is so, she's so strong? She's so thin and wafy? Well, you know what's funny? You get out there, and now that you see her, um, like, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Like, now that you see her in Close the up. action of cutting into this guy, you notice that her features have changed slightly. They've, like, reshaped, and her face is starting to change as well into this long, misshapen gray head without a nose. And her arms that were just normal human arms start to elongate all the way to the oh, floor. And her on. body gets tall as well. And so oh, as you no. go to grab her, you realize you're not grabbing at some human. You're grabbing at some crazy aberration. Oh my god. And she's just cutting away. She doesn't even see you. Matthew, your turn. Uh, She's going to do a telekinetic projectile again. Telekinetic projectile. Uh, 16 to hit. 16 hits exactly. Nice. Two points of damage. Two points sure. of damage. Another, Surely that'll another finish another her off. <laughs> <laughs> she gets hit in the head by something. One of her pruning shears laying on the board. Boom. And she just continues laughing maniacally, cutting away all the while. Grant, the door is open. What do you do? I also open the door, by the way. He also opens the door. Take note of that, Troy. I get a move action too, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> no one puts Matthew in the corner. You know what? <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, uh, Grant, what do you do? Grant's character looks around, tries to see if there's any weapons he could strike her with. Does he see anything? Perception check? Uh, you already. S oh, yeah, you failed your perception failed check perception, earlier. So but you do see a now. bunch of shit on that table. That's not too far away from you. Uh, all right, so let's uh, pick up one of the, 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 the scalpels, maybe, or some Scalpel? And then attack her. Let's see All what right, happens. improvised weapon. 18 on the die. Nice. That is a hit. It's oh. going to do 1d2 damage. 1d2. Okay. Uh, boop. Does two damage. Oh, now you get max damage. Nice job, nice. Rob. Critical hit. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. So you just grab this improvised weapon. You right flash out at her. <sighs> and uh, now show me where you moved. Absolutely. Show me on the map where she touched you. Oh, God. That <laughs> joke is never funny, uh, Troy. All right. Uh, oh, I'll well, if the... he's in the way, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, that's I don't I think wondering. I could have gotten there. Yeah. Should I so, give myself those two you, hit points yeah, back? Yeah, you should. You could throw it at her. Uh, can I, well, can I roll that over, Troy? We'll no, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let it roll over. So you throw it at her. You go around the table. You throw it at her. You Bink. hit her for two points of damage. All right. She continues right next as you try to grab her as a telekinetic object hits her in the face. As you throw something at her, she just boom, boom, boom. And she continues cutting away Ugh. at this guy laughing the whole time. <laughs> this gray, weird creature. The robe falls off as the body elongates into this like strange gray Gumby-like creature. Oh, and it is Joe's turn. Um, he is going to... Why don't you to... try to grapple her again? He's going to, <laughs> he, he doesn't know where it comes from, but he lashes out with his arms, uh, with his elbow, first with his elbow, and then with his knee. Two quick, successive attempts at hits to try to basically disable it. What would you call these attacks? I might call it a flurry of blows. Oh my oh. goodness. Ba-ba! 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 Things are about to get First monkey. one <laughs> is a 21 to hit. Hit! Yeah! Boom! Boom. Boom. Elbow! Does six points of damage Woo! with the elbow. Line. Boom! And then comes through with the knee. Uh, 14 to hit. 14 is a miss. Shit! Oh. Shit! Flurry of blows, knee. flurry <laughs> of blows. Get ready for one of them to hit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Uh, new round, Matthew. She's taking some damage now. You still in the cage? Uh, yes. Okay. Safer in the cage. <laughs> Probably. You don't even have your cane. She's just going to fling another uh, projectile out. All right. Fling away. Miss. Poop. Grant. <laughs> Grant's going to, we Grant's character, that is, is going to wheel around the table and stab at her okay. with another scalpel. Let's wow. see what happens. Ooh, it's a 13. That's a miss. 13's a miss, but she is flanked within there. If she wants to get away, she's going to have to yeah. provoke 
Skid, you're up. Uh, so Skid's character is going to kind of wander out of the cell and look at the stuff. Can I do a perception check? Did sure. I, did, yeah, just, uh, uh, oh, 20. And you're looking at the stuff on the table? Yeah. Yeah, needles, knives, gardening tools, like a bunch of weird shit that no doctor, no medical doctor would use. So there's no, like, kerosene or uh, saltpeter? <laughs> no. Anything no, like that? No, the, You know what there is, though? Hanging above the table is a kerosene lamp. Oh, all right, so he tries to grab the kerosene lamp okay. if he can. Yep. And if he has time, he's going to like instinctually uh, throw it at this woman. Grabs the lamp, thereby darkening the room. Oh. Perfect. And throws the lamp directly at her, rolled a hit. Okay. Uh, that is a 18 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. Oh, beautiful. So is this like... One of my regular things that I do, or is this have special rules, or like how does one? Yeah, uh, you wanted to. You talking about splash damage? Yeah, talk, yeah. And how much damage? Yeah, let's hurt that, Grant yeah. and Joe's character too. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, so one point of damage okay. to her. Oh wait, no. Uh, that's well. Okay, if this if this is treated like one of my normal things when I do this kind of thing. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, then that's. We'll say it's an improvised. Uh, alchemical bomb. Okay, so that's five points of damage. Five points of damage. Yeah. Huge. And what about the splash to your buddies? And five points to everyone else in her immediate vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> and is it just one? Yeah. That w- yeah, yeah. This scientist is mad! Yeah. I'm so mad. Uh, it's her turn, and now she's ready to attack. She was preoccupied for her, with her work for 1d4 rounds. I rolled a four. Now it's time to attack. That was lucky. Yeah, it was lucky. Uh, well, I can attack Grant or Joe. I should probably just roll a die. Do it. One, two, three, Joe. Four, five, six, Grant. Here comes the hit, Joe. <laughs> Every time. Neon green, 15 to hit. That's a hit. Woo! You might go unconscious here, good buddy. Uh, oh, 11 points oh, of damage. No. Are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? 11 <laughs> points of damage. Are you unconscious? <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, of course he is. No. Nope. nope. Oh. Wow. Awesome. All right, well, then I'm going to attack you again. <laughs> uh, natty 18. Uh. And this one is for seven points of damage. Permanently dead. No, you're not permanently dead. Monks suck. <laughs> you're not permanently you. dead. Permanently was, dead. Were you unconscious the first time? Permanently dead. He no. had the ferocity. Troy. Permanently dead. Oh, ferocity. Troy, does yeah, she... Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> does she have dark vision, Troy? <laughs> that is real dead. Good question. Yes. She does. She does have dark vision. But none of us. You could have told me he had ferocity. See you, Matthew. Oh. <laughs> Don't give that man a beer. <laughs> yeah. Should we pour one out for Joe? You're really oh, permanently yeah. dead. Oh, thank you. You could have told me he had ferocity. Oh, wow, it's open already. I- I just don't understand how you wouldn't know that. I had 10 Why wouldn't points. you tell you the audience, like, points of well, damage. I've got ferocity, and then I would attack Grant, for oh, example. Oh, well, let's just go attack Grant, then. No, no, it's too late. You're dead. <laughs> oh. How you many... asked me if I was unconscious. Troy, Troy, how... I just want you to know how this game is played. You told me specifically before the show that I am not to speak unless spoken to. That's true. <laughs> I only answered your question. But that was out of game. I just meant in life. <laughs> <laughs> Troy... I would prefer if you didn't speak to me. How many, of the game. how many hit points do you think first-level characters have? Well, that's why when I said, how are you not unconscious? You were like, I'm not unconscious. I'm like, all right, well, then I'll attack you again. You got a 12 con. And you didn't mention ferocity at all. You didn't, you didn't enlighten anyone to ferocity. Well, it, I was going to do it on my round. I didn't know you had two attacks. You're That's dead. very impressive. You are permanently dead, and they got to see it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so goes the hungry ghost monk. He had a good run. All right. He had a good run. Thanks for everyone who voted. Thanks to everybody who voted <laughs> for the Hungry nice. Ghost Monk. Great job, wow. everybody. God, I love this game. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Well, Joe, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, Matthew, you're up. 
<laughs> Can I just ask, have you ever killed a character in a first session before? Nope. <laughs> I was all excited to do the dream. I'm like, oh, they're gonna get so mad when I kill him. I'll kill Joe first, cause he'll get really mad. And then they'll start to figure out that it's a dream. Then we'll start the adventure path and no one will die. Right. First, first attack. 11 points of damage? If you had said ferocity, I would have attacked Grant. <sighs> there may be casualties along the way. There's no first level way. character that just takes 11 points of damage and isn't unconscious. That's why you say, well, I'm awake because I have ferocity. And I'll be like, <laughs> well, then I'm not going to attack him because that'll permanently kill him. I'll attack Grant. You know what we should definitely do, though? <laughs> we did that already. I was between Joe and replay, I. Replay it three more times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Joe, you have a couple minutes. Roll up a new character. Uh, Matthew, you're up. Uh, I'm going to cast light on the bar of my cell. Actually. <laughs> it's a first level character, bro. You don't have to come up with a name or anything. Exactly, or a backstory. Yeah, that's, the, that's what takes longest. There's some dark the spaces here. You know? It does with Joe. You want to let them vote on what you want to play? <laughs> 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 Looks like it's another Hungry Ghost Smoke. <laughs> Matthew, you're up. I, just I can't cast believe light this. on the bar of my cell. Cast light, okay. So we can all see. Okay. Uh, and then, is there a door in this room? There's a door to the east. Uh, she is going to step out of her cell and walk and head towards the door. All right. We're just doing whatever we want. <laughs> We're going to split the party. We're going to kill characters. Uh, it's as if it's the first time we've ever played. Grant, you're up. Thanks to Kevin for the beers, by the way. Hey, thanks, Thank Kevin. You, Kevin. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Our agent. And my former roommate. Get Joe a shot. <laughs> uh, Grant's character will, oh, you killed him. I told you discretion was the better part of valor. And will attack with an unarmed strike at this terrible creature. Ooh. 19 on the die for a 22. That'll play. Nine points of damage. Eight hit points left. She is dying. Yeah. Yes. So close, Joe. <laughs> One more round, good buddy. You know what you should have done? You should have grappled her. <laughs> if he had just grappled her. Yeah. Why did you try that? Yeah, yeah. If I'm being honest with you, though, Troy, it was five points of damage. Oh. Well, I'd prefer if you were honest. So I'm telling you the truth now. All right, so she is not dead. Oh. You're a filthy liar. I, I don't have a D3. I rolled a six on a D... I'm so sorry. You're just a cheater. That's yeah. what you are. It's six oh, wait, listen, six we're all emotional. Didn't mean yeah. Yeah. We Jeez. lost one of the greatest characters in the history we're of... We're all very <laughs> emotional right now. I mean, we, uh, it's amazing we can that's, even do that's math. The, that's the first stage of grief is cheating. <laughs> Everyone knows that. I was just so excited. Cheating followed by denial. Right. Followed by rolling up a new character. Exactly. I was excited for Joe to play another character that sounded just like Lork. It's like Rag Blugtesk and all the orcs you play. Right. By the way, this is a perfect picture of what it's like to play with us. Joe dies, Grant cheats, skid, skid talks in funny voices. And Matthew hands out beers. And then Matthew goes out. <laughs> Matthew, uh, get another round. Yeah, Matthew the peacemaker comes around with beers for a bit. It's like, everybody calm down. Here, have an IPA. Skid, you see this crazy creature. You thought it was a human. Now it morphs into this weird creature. Kill this orc. You, you are a doctor. You're a medical doctor. You've taken the Hippocratic Oath. I'm not. You see, <laughs> you, you know he's dead. You are 100% sure he's dead. Yes, and, okay. What do you do? Uh, so I see, so, oh, look at that bronze-skinned shirtless fella. I would have liked to get to know him, but I never will now. So I guess I better try to kill the person who killed him and grabs an implement off the table okay. and stabs wildly at this Thing, All person. right, stab away. Uh, nice. That is a natty 15. That is 15. That is a hit. 1d2 okay. points of damage. Okay. Uh, that's two points of damage. And she's dead. Oh, yeah! my God. <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah. Just somebody in the chat? Who, it, just, who handed me this? It's the urine of a dehydrated man. <laughs> <laughs> Get up here. Come here. A very dehydrated man. Stand right up here. This is so awesome. Yes, thank you so much. You, oh, sir, yeah. get a bottle cap. You earned a Joe right. bottle cap. You earned it. Thank you, the cash equivalent is 
One half of That's one Dax. Six. There's Dax bottle caps now. That's a Dax. I feel Joe. Those, you know what's funny? Those Joe bottle caps are going to be like flyers they hand out on the street. Like yeah. when we walk out of the theater, there's going to be Joe bottle caps all over the ground. <laughs> just throw them right in the trash like as soon as they're a block away. Here, you throw this I out. was packing these up, these gold bottle caps, because we want to be able to give you guys bottle caps while we're here. And my daughter grabbed one. And she grabbed the one of me. And she goes, Daddy. Aww. And I was like, that is so cute. Give me that bottle cap. We only have so many of them to give out. <laughs> and my wife was like, would you give her a bottle cap? And she started crying, and I was like, okay, take the bottle cap. I'm so sorry. And I, had, I couldn't believe I did that. <laughs> I like, took it away from her for you. For you. <laughs> You're a hell of a father. I'm not shocked at all. I'm by, so by not way, a surprise. By the way, it's so on brand. By the way, so... she, was, she was sobbing, crying, and then as soon as I get back to her, she was like, <laughs> and then ran away. <laughs> Laughed in my face. Oh, man. Working on it. Okay. Uh, all right, oh, that, to, okay. this woman, whatever she was, has died. This creature lies before you. The man that she was cutting into, 100% dead. She ravaged him for six seconds upon six seconds upon six seconds. She just kept cutting into a man that was already dead. Like a metronome. Yes. <laughs> a a six-second metronome. She did it to the tune of staying alive. Yeah. <laughs> ha, 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 staying alive. As she killed him. Reverse CPR. It's very ironic. Right. What do the four, oh, I'm sorry, three of you do? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Too soon. Um, so I, my character like looks down, like he's still holding the bloody like scalpel or whatever in his right. hand, and he like drops it and he's just like, oh, I was just joining in. <laughs> looks like she's dead, as well as that fella there on the table, <laughs> and he goes over and like starts like going over his body, like searching him to see what, what's, what's, his, what's his deal. He had nothing, uh, searching the, the dead body on the table or the on dead the orc? Table. On the table. Yeah, you search him and he had like vestiges of clothing that had been completely torn apart, just forming like a makeshift loincloth, hmm. crisscrossing scars, open wounds all over his body and just gushing entrails after her last cuts. But he um. doesn't have like a wallet on him or anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about a journal? <laughs> yeah. There is a library card, and you look, and there's a photo, and it's you. Oh, no. <laughs> he stole your library card. Oh, no, card. he stole my library card. No wonder I'm getting all those fines. <laughs> <laughs> I called the complaint so many times. I feel bad. Uh, yeah, you don't recognize this guy at all. You obviously don't recognize this creature. You don't even know yourself. Uh, so, so, well... Uh, these poor men died in horrible pain and terrible poverty. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And he looks around at everyone else. He's just like, I'm, I'm not quite sure who I am. Do any of you know who you are? And uh, my character uh, is at the door. Is it locked, by the way? Uh, you're at the door. No, the door is unlocked. All right. Can I lock it? Bro, make an enable device check. Uh, <laughs> he's a reverse rogue. Yeah, you, I mean, there's no... You, you would need a key to lock it, and you don't You mean like on the key. ring of keys we found? Yeah. You could, you, you could roll disable device to try and jam it. All right, I won't worry about it. Uh, it's a stupid I, idea, man. Yeah, just... <laughs> I don't reward stupid ideas. <laughs> you don't know what the idea was, Troy. You can't conceive of my ideas over there on your ivory throne. Yeah. It's true. Uh, you know, I requested a higher seat, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> the ivory throne we doesn't travel well. It's fine. It doesn't travel well. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, so what dumb She's thing do you want to do? She'll turn around the skin set. I actually don't know who I am. Oh. Curious. A lot of strange things happening lately, I've found. <laughs> Is that fellow dead? Yeah. No, I meant... The, I meant oh, wait, the, which... Him? Him? Her? The, him? The, the, him? The, the that fellow, no. These, the, well, the, the, three... The, the orcish one. Oh, him! I liked him a lot, but it looks like he is dead. <laughs> I just thought I'd rub it in. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> You're a true friend. <laughs> Uh, she will go over and pick up He's the so keys. He's so busy building a new character. <laughs> no. You guys, you were, you were getting a first-hand picture. When Joe concentrates, he, the world may as well explode around it's him. It's so I funny. Like, we've no tried idea. to have conversations with him today. <laughs> like, just, he's doing what he was doing just a second ago. Just like, we were at dinner. Yeah, we were at dinner, yeah. Just like talking about the show, and he's... Really, really excited about my work month. And then he'll start a conversation when you're trying to talk to him with somebody else because he literally had no idea that someone was trying to communicate with him. It's so sad because he was so excited on the plane. He's like, I read Orcs of Galarian. I did. I read the martial arts handbook. I did. I really think I can, I really think I can do this. I wanted to put in the effort. <laughs> but you know what? You couldn't. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't. <laughs> It's got you there, Joe. It's got you there, buddy. I'm enjoying myself right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> Joe's in his element, making up a new he's character. He's playing Pandemic. <laughs> yeah, he's playing Pandemic. <laughs> it's so good on the iPad. You have to try it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so you guys are jibber jam, and what about you? Uh, I don't know who I am either, but... With these two buffoons around me, I don't know how long I'll last. Rolls of perception and a detect magic around the room uh, mm -hmm. for a 15 on the room and then just general detect magic. You know, it's a broken rule. Sure. Uh, general detect magic on the room. You don't detect any magic per se, but you do see uh, that, like, towards the west side of the room where the rubble has collapsed the wall, mm -hmm. the room opens to the right and to the left but it's cloaked in shadow. I'll move to the edge of that uh, area to try to unveil what's around the corner. So Please. Like by the barrels. Move your character. You move there. Uh -huh. You see a table. You move to the south, or you look to the south, rather, and yep. you see a passageway oh. that wraps around like that. I will inspect the table. Should I roll on that, or just you'll let me see what's on it? Yeah, roll on it, Graham. <laughs> 19 on the die for a 22. Good roll. <laughs> Classic Grant. It's, uh, it's a table. <laughs> is, it, is it a West Elm table, or is it like an <laughs> Ikea table? It was a good roll. It was DC 23, I can't tell you uh, that. Uh, You'll never know, and that's the mystery of Strange Ale. <laughs> Who manufactured this table in the first hall? <laughs> Could you imagine vamping this long for someone to create a character? Because that's what's happening <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, do you want to look the other way, Grant? Yeah, we'll look the other way. I will move. Uh, and on the way there, uh, if my character were to have spells available to him, would he be well-rested enough to cast one at this moment? Sure, but like, imagine, if you don't know who you are, like Matthew's character, she yeah. like reached out and remembered that she had the power to move these things. So okay. if you don't remember who you are, you don't remember about these spells. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, so I'll just move. Okay. I'll go to the furnace. No, you can explain it, though, like if you just have this sick, innate sense, like you Ooh. want to do something. And it's appropriate for me because it's all about self-preservation. Sure. So of course I cast Cure Light Wounds on myself. Right. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so that's... Uh, that works. I, yeah, so <laughs> unlike him to do Five this. Five points We wanted to be healing. on brand. Uh, 11. 11. Ooh, well, wow. no, five points of healing, I'm at 11. You turn seven. the corner and you see an iron furnace Ooh. hunkering in the corner of the basement. And it has a four-foot square door gaping half open. Nearby, next to the furnace, sprawls a heap of gory clothes <laughs> and other, like, dubiously flammable trash. The furnace now lies cold, as far as you can see. Uh, uh, I start crying as I reach into this refuse of bloody clothing and try to find anything of use for me. Okay. Uh, roll a perception check. Uh, nine. Nine. Yeah, you're just reaching through there, and like immediately, your hand gets wet. Oh, oh no. And it's like a cold, cold wet. Oh. And you would, the more you dig in there, all of a sudden you feel like a little. He touched me again. Why? Why? Uh, but yeah, you reach in there and 
with a D with a with a nine perception, you don't see anything. Okay. Uh, what about Matthew? What are you doing over there? Uh, she are at see... that door. Well, she picked up the keys. Picked up the keys. And she, as she sees Grant's character go around the corner, she'll out of he'll be very curious about this, and she'll follow him over there. You follow him over there, and you see the same scene: this grisly pile of garbage right near a cold furnace with an open door leading into the furnace itself. And you can see, I'll reveal a, bit, a little bit more. It's a pretty big furnace. Boop. Ooh, that's a big oh, wow. old furnace. Wow. So you said it's cold and the door is open? It's cold, the door is open. Um, and can I do a perception check into the furnace to see if there's anything sure. in there, anything left over? You sure can. 18. You notice a couple things. First of all, you notice several scorched humanoid bones amid the ashes inside the furnace, easily from half a dozen bodies. You also note that deeper into the furnace, you see vents leading up and out of the furnace that are particularly wide, so much so, for example, that a small creature could easily fit inside while a medium creature would have to squeeze. Oh, no. If you look into it, you also see regular seams and offshoots within the duct make it uh, look relatively scalable if you wanted to try and go in and climb up into the, the boiler of death. <laughs> <laughs> that guy got it. Got Bottle it. cap for that laugh. <laughs> bottle cap. Bottle. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Just for laughing? Yeah, that's it was funny. Yes. That was a great laugh. That was, that was laugh. like what a was a really notable Infectious laugh. Infectious laugh. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Texas-sized laugh. Skid. Skid, what is your character doing? It's so funny that we have Skid's character, Matthew's character. Yeah. It's, they're named like one of Matthew's plays. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would, I would protest, but I am actually in the throes of trying to name a play right now. <laughs> <laughs> what, you got any working titles, buddy? I'm not going to tell you, but I, no, brought, please, I, come brought, on. I brought one into class, and literally we were, it was a great conversation. We were talking about things, and finally one of my, my classmates was like, you have to change the title. <laughs> <laughs> That is why you've been very sleepy lately, though. You're in the middle of rewrites, right? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. He's, he's very talented, and he I is. love him. And I, I actually do love him and respect him. Let's give him a big hand. Let's give him a big hand. All right. Stop. Stop. He's great. He got it at Juilliard. Come on. Let's, let's give him a big hand. I would love it if your teacher was like, oh, that's the name of your play? I guess you're not Juilliard material after all. <laughs> Get out, good sir, and he rips a crest off your jacket. <laughs> the Juilliard, the Juilliard symbol, like, ripped it off. You just see <laughs> That's my family blazer. crest. They, they yeah. break my pen. <laughs> they, they, break they break your pen. You'll never write feet. again in this town. <laughs> Matthew's crying outside of the new school several hours later. <laughs> Let me in! Let me in! Let me, Let me in! in. <laughs> I can still write, damn it. <laughs> Did you? Do you have a pen? Skid. Um, Skid, what are you? What are you? What is your wax? Did we ever doing? like look? Did we ever examine the woman who was doing the vivisection? Did we ever like look at her body? No, no, you didn't. I'm going to try to do that. Okay. Because I'm going to pour over her body lot, trying mm -hmm, to figure mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. what her deal is. Sure. Roll, roll perception. All right. Uh, that is a 14. Okay. So. The minute she changed shape into her, obviously her true form, and the vestiges of the doctoral robes fell away, all that's left is this strange alien looking creature. There's no clothing, no weapons, no pockets. She used claws to kill that shitty orc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heard that. It's not. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, John, I didn't know you were still here. I picked that one up. Yeah. Uh, so she doesn't have anything on her person. You could roll. Uh, what are your knowledge? Is I well, I was going to ask if I could do uh, knowledge arcana or knowledge nature or spellcraft. Yeah. Go ahead and roll knowledge arcana. Okay. So we can roll knowledge checks even though we have no memory. Is that how this works? I'm talking to Skid right now, Matthew. All right. <laughs> Uh, that is a 16. 16. You've heard about this creature. You don't remember yourself, but you do remember somehow in your studies, you're like, that's a doppelganger. Oh! Cool. Doppelganger. Doppelganger. And as you're looking, 
you see centipedes coming out of oh, its mouth. Oh, come on! <laughs> come on! Uh, it's right out of the mouth. I'm glad just... your iPad broke. Oh, you don't mean it. You, you deserve it, you <laughs> monster. Uh, you killed Doppelganger. Joe and you mentioned a centipede. <laughs> the punishment um, fits the crime. Yeah. Two uh, sides of the same coin. It's a doppelganger. Okay. Uh, do you join Grant's and Matthew's character? Yeah, I like come, um, I get up and kind of like hustle like down the hall to like mm -hmm. join them. All right, uh, you Guys, get a... I, I think they, that lady back there, I think she was a doppelganger. And I'm not quite sure how I know what that is, but I know what it is, and she's one of them. <laughs> oh, thank you for that information. Uh, you there, uh, old <laughs> lady. Yes, um, what's your name? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. You there, you, you seem to like fire, yes? Oh, yes. No, I'm a big fan of fire. Yeah, and, and she will, how did you know? She will gesture to the furnace and say, <laughs> I think there might be a way out if someone is willing to risk it. Ooh, a furnace. That's where fire's born. I'll go in there. <laughs> so he like crawls in, he just like ducks in and just starts crawling in. You crawl into the uh, furnace. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you crawl into the furnace, and all of a something, something, all of a sudden, something grabs your leg and holds on. God! And it's got like sharp claws, and it's just grabbing onto your leg. Roll for initiative. Oh my oh God! Boy. Okay. I'm nervous for you guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you know what it's like. Matthew, what'd you get? Nine. Nine for Matthew. Grant? Fifteen. Skid? Ten. G hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, your character is outside of the furnace. Uh, Skid's insane character climbed in. You don't really see anything. There's no problem right now, as far as you can tell. Although I'm sure you're watching in there. Roll a perception check. Oh. 21. Yeah, that'll, that'll play. You do see a rustling in there. You know that he's not alone inside the furnace. Is it dark inside? Like, would it be difficult to attack someone in there if we were to go Yeah, in? yeah, it's dark. You don't know what it is. So first attack, I don't know why I'm doing this. He did throw a bomb at me. Uh, we'll cast light inside of the furnace and then get right ne next up to him with this move action. You cast light inside the furnace and you see clutching amid the bones inside the furnace a rat folk oh, grabbing wow. at uh, Skid's character's My leg. My character. Yeah, just like grabbing at it, like clawing to try and pull itself out of the ashes. So I'll move next to him uh, in an attempt to be able to help him as quickly as possible next turn. And I can't wait for this furnace to turn on and for all of us to roll new characters. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. Skid, what do you do? Uh, I roll over and like look like at this thing grabbing me and I see the light and I see its features, I guess. And I say, uh, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, hello, can I help you? Joe, what does this rat folk look like? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh my God! He's back! We did it! We did it! <laughs> Face covered in ashes and soot. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Where am I? Well, uh, answer A. I don't know. <laughs> and answer B, I don't know. <laughs> he claws himself out of this, out of this pit. Uh, what is this? Oh, thank you. That's so nice. I'll bring that up in a minute. Uh, he claws himself out of these ashes and is just like, his eyes glaring around, panicked at, at all of you. Uh, rat folk, grayish fur, uh, looks like pretty torn up and pretty old, like seeing graying fur huh. uh, around the edges of his face. Cool. Um, 
and I, uh, I don't really have a voice or an actor. Or, <laughs> Let's see the actor. Uh, or any feet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's played by Bill Murray. <clears throat> Uh, he is, I'll just tell you now, there's no point in withholding. He is one of the classes that all was voted for us very highly, so I went right to that. But it was not number one. He is a rat folk, elder mythos wizard. Nice. Oh. Nice. Scholar. Beautiful, nice. beautiful, beautiful. He is a wizard nice. that is obsessed with alien life beyond the stars and awesome. what may be coming here without our knowledge. So. Nice. I'm going to explore that. Uh, I'm going back to my iPad for the next half hour. All right. <laughs> All right, so this rat folk talks to you. It doesn't try to attack you or anything. What do, yeah. you, what do you do? So, eh, I know, couldn't help but notice you, like, clutching at my ankle a little uh, aggressively there. Uh, there's no need. Uh, we can be friends if that's what you'd like to be. I'm game. <laughs> My friends is good, yes. I, I don't know how I got here. I'm a little confused, to be honest. Oh, I like I'm that accent lost. you're speaking with. Uh, uh, Big Ben, I, very distinctive. I picked it up from you. Very precise. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> I can place it immediately in the uh, <laughs> pantheon of accents in which you, you've, you're prone to use. <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, defence mechanism to try to make... Friends with someone I think is about to kill me. No, you like Zelig. <laughs> I like it. Well, uh, <laughs> as long as we're here, my little friend, uh, why don't we go ahead and explore the rest of this so-called furnace? He, his eyes widen. He looks around like in, in a panic. He starts running his hands. My, my spell book. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Spell... Oh, he starts rooting furiously too. with his claws through the furnace ashes. Let me know if you find if another any one there's any evidence there. that his spell book was burned. This mm. is extremely important to him. Everybody roll a perception check. 21. 14. I don't know what my perception is. <laughs> <laughs> you say he hasn't got that far. I'm going to go with 25. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, do you try to grapple the spell book? <laughs> it kills me. Punch him. it. Punch it in the face. Punch uh, the spell book. Uh, Grab it and then try to punch it. Uh, you rolled a what? A 25? 21. 21. That was the highest, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, notice yeah. while this conversation is going on in the furnace of bones and ashes, uh, you see weapons... And oh. armor and other mundane equipment <gasps> discarded oh. among the garbage Whoa. pile near the furnace. Uh, you also see a masterwork vial buried among the soiled clothes. A what? And garbage. Vial? What word? Viol. A viola? viola? No, like it's, a, a fiddle? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like a, like a violin, but it's vial. Vi viola? What? Viola? What viola? Google it, guys. Spe spell it. How do you spell it? Spell it. V-I-O-L. Oh. What? What? Vial. Is that a thing? It's a musical instrument of the Renaissance and Baroque oh, periods. Okay. Typically six strings, held vertically and paid with a bow. Any oh, viol players oh, out oh, there? I'm sorry. The viola de gamba. Viol. Viol. Uh, viol. Uh, it's a viola. A viola. Uh, uh, Matthew Cabricas. <laughs> the Cabricas. The Cabricas. That was the family crest. It was a viol. <laughs> <laughs> You're not truly on material. <laughs> My feel. What the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> Welcome to GCB Live. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see all, all the stuff we normally cut out when we have time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you find weapons, armor, that somehow you all feel certain connections to. You're like, that's... I don't know why I know this, but that's my hide armor. That's my breastplate. That's my kukri. And my character reaches down and says, my God, it's just like my kukri, but it's a plus five avenging holy kukri. Unbelievable. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. Oh. It's definitely not. <laughs> uh, but you, you don't know why, but you have a certain connection to all of these things, and you do see a spell book as well while they're having their conversation. Yes. But you guys are inside the furnace. What do you do? Right. Do you come back out? Do you say to anything like, I found something? Oh, I'm sorry. I got me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think we may have found something of interest. Oh, the old lady said something. I'm going to go investigate immediately. And he <laughs> crawls out and goes and investigates. 
Wait, wait for me. Don't leave me alone in this place. Oh, no, he, come, come. He starts on all four. It's yeah. <laughs> Did you find anything scratching. of interest in the furnace? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. Funny you ask. <laughs> oh, I did find something of interest, and here he is. <laughs> he politely bows. Madame, it's a pleasure to meet you. And you as well. Do you know how you got here? Because I don't know how I did. Haven't the foggiest. Oh, right. that's funny. Have you perhaps seen a spell book around? I've been looking for a spell book I desperately. Think you might want to look over there. Ooh, there's a great pile of tiny violins over there. <laughs> <laughs> I play the violin. Perfect. But do he you scrambles play? over, grabs his spell book. Finally, a, I assume a it's dose of good book. luck. Starts obsessively paging through it. Oh, my God, it's all there. It's all there. I may get out of here yet. Listen to me, though. I think, based on how we were arranged at the beginning of this adventure, <laughs> which I refer to as this adventure, we're in a jail. We're in a clearly organized place. If we leave that door, which I believe you mentioned was unlocked. It was. I wanted to lock it to protect us, but the GM overruled me. <laughs> I'm glad we're all breaking the fourth law. <laughs> That's right. I think I You can talk out of character, too, if you want to. I what? It's in the rule book. <laughs> Our safest route of egress from this place is through the furnace itself. Who shall lead the way? Perhaps the rat folk would like to. <laughs> Typical grab. Asps. <laughs> <laughs> Very you, dangerous. Yeah, you go, <laughs> you go first. first. You go first. You go first, rat folk. You have that tiny violin. You're the around. safest. He's tiny. He can fit into small spaces. He can see in complete darkness. He's terrified. But he'll go. It's true. You make a strong case, Joe. <laughs> so you guys are going to go up the furnace. Up the furnace. Up the flue. Up, up the, flue, the flue, as it were. Up the down staircase. Oh, wait. So is there also a formula book among all that stuff? There sure is. Oh. And it, so my character looks at it, and he turns it over, and it's clearly like very familiar to him somehow. And he looks up and he says, I think my name might be Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> because as you can see, I have a strong feeling this belongs to me and the name Sheila is emblazoned across the front cover. <laughs> so that must mean me. <laughs> you can call me Sheila. <laughs> I'll change that on the map. <laughs> it is very nice to meet you, Sheila. Nice to meet you. I shall call you Mrs. O'Lady. <laughs> and I shall call you Brett Ratner. <laughs> and you I shall call the man that I don't know who he is. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. We'll what think was, of a nickname later. What was Matthew's later. name again? Mrs. O'Lady. <laughs> like an Irish, like Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Oh, O'Lady. Oh, 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 see you tonight. <laughs> well, if it's it isn't Mrs. Oh. O'Lady. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Sheila. <laughs> She runs Old Lady's Pub down on the corner. I'm a bit out of Old Lady's Pub. All right, so leaving that other door behind, you decide to climb up the furnace <laughs> and. He says again in anger. No, no, we're just talking. Barely concealed <laughs> anger. We're just a bunch of friends having a good time. <laughs> just 300 friends hanging out. We lost Skid. <laughs> He's done. Was it Sheila or yeah, Fred around there? Uh, Mrs. O'Lady, I think. Mrs. O'Lady. Oh, Mrs. O'Lady. Oh, I think it was the Pope that got him, Troy. <laughs> we, lose, we lose hours of recording when he gets caught like this. Yep. <laughs> hey, hey, Skid. Yes. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Have you met the old lady boys? They're so wonderful. <laughs> uh... Who's going first? Uh, we have to explain the yes, yes joke. No, I think. no, no. It's no, hilarious. No, 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 no. no, no. I think it's hilarious. The <laughs> because they're going to hear it on the show. <laughs> and now it'll be even funnier, and we should let them in on the joke in a way that doesn't make fun of anybody. 
So we're at PaisoCon. I was going to say, oh, we can do this without naming anything. We're not but... naming any names. There was a gentleman or lady. Oh, no. Oh, talking oh, on no. the... <laughs> on this the, is uh, on video. Yes, they're just talking about... They're very excited about their new product. And it's just... It's a product nobody really cares about. <laughs> <laughs> and they, like, end their speech with, like, and this product is completely back compatible. And no one really reacts. <laughs> But we just all look at Skid, who's like eight drinks in. He just goes, yes, <laughs> yes. And we slowly begin to lose it throughout the rest of the banquet. <laughs> Skid had to leave. I had to leave. leave. But he was so leave. sincere. I to leave. I was totally back compatible. I was nothing. sitting next to Skid. Yes. I was the only one that noticed it at the time. We were both laughing together. <laughs> It was like five and, minutes later, and, I was like, what is so funny? Oh and Jason Bowman is in front of like a projector being like, and that's why the new Pathfinder playtest druid is amazing. And we're both dying laughing, just, just like <laughs> hoping no one will see us. It was amazing. It was so yes. guttural. He was just like, yes! Ah. <laughs> It's so sad. I was so drunk and I was so tired. I was, like, I I was gonna say, just, not unlike I, this moment right yeah, right, now. Right, exactly. <laughs> I just could not stop laughing. Uh, oh, all right. Okay. Oh, sorry. Good times. Sorry. Sheila, Brett Boom. Ratner, Mrs. O'Lady, and what was your moniker? The fellow, I don't know who he is. <laughs> My name's Brett. The fellow, I don't know Br who he Brett? is. <laughs> who goes Brett. first up the flu? You can Brett call me goes Dr. first. Who. No, All right, I need you to roll a climb check. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, Easy climb check. There are handholds. Just going to wing it. Natty 18. He's fine. <laughs> Scrambles. A whole new character. Look at this. This is gorgeous. You scamper up, and I should probably tell you what you see. Let's get that sirenscape up, Joe. Okay. I keep touching my mouth on the mic, and it, it, it tingles. <laughs> <laughs> It tingles That's in an way. electric shock, Troy. That's, yes. that's, that's, yeah. that's electricity. <laughs> I feel like I'm sterile now. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. <laughs> All right. The world is safe. <laughs> no more in the valleys. <laughs> Disaster <laughs> averted. Adventures won. <laughs> We've killed the, the mighty beast and made it sterile. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. Ah, it four so, months too late. Oh, we, can, we can take one. It's all right. I think it would be like 13 months too late. All right, so yeah. you, you, you climb up first. You want to get technical. You climb up this duct, and you can see that it opens into a tight, but barely traversable uh, space that looks like it widens into another odd-shaped chamber of some sort, like this furnace is leading up into a boiler. Okay. So you climb up it, and you you're inside of a boiler, and you see a a heavy iron door, partially opening out of the boiler, into a dark room. Uh, he's gonna move to it, grasping his spellbook close, and peek in the door. Who else is climbing up the duct? Oh, I'm gonna. Follow right behind. My my character follows right behind, crawling after his new friend. He feels an immediate connection. Immediate with, connection with Brett Ratner because we have the same accent. Both sure. accent related. It's an accent related connection. Yes. Right. It's like one accent is really good. Yeah. And, and another one, one needs work. And the other one needs right. work. Right. Workshopping with the other one. We're workshopping the other one. Yeah. Uh, roll a climb check. Okay. I hate you guys. Uh, oh, Natty 19. Uh, that is a that is a 16. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> minus two. Yeah, so you like grab grab one one arm, pull yourself up, yeah. stumble a little bit at the end, but you're also up and inside of a boiler. You see Brett Ratner. Uh, <laughs> that's canon now. Oh God! <laughs> All your names are up there. Look at the fellow. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Grant's mad. He's like, I don't like that name. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm okay. I want a Brett Ratner name. So you see Brett Ratner, and he is standing near the opening of an iron door. Grant and Matthew, what are you doing? Uh, 
Yes! <laughs> Would you like to go first, Mrs. O'Lady? Mrs. O'Lady will go first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. So Mrs. O'Lady is going to climb Mrs. up. Mrs. O'Lady's first. Mrs. O'Lady rolls a five. DC five. Oh, God. There are handholds. I have a minus four to climb. <laughs> Wow. It was DC5. Easy climb. There are handholds, and so you kind of scurry your way up. You're, you got your cane. Da, da, da. Did you find anything in that garbage pile? I found my cane, and I found a set of lamellar armor. Ooh. And I found a set of thieves' tools. Well, la di da. deep connection, too. Those thieves' tools would have helped you when you were in the dungeon. What about you? The, the fellow I don't know who he is. Yes. The best name ever that mm -hmm. I love. We could do an Ackerman. Ac Ackerman. T-F-I-D-N-W-H-I? Yeah, that doesn't work either. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Acronym. Fidquis. <laughs> Fidquis. 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 All right, Thickwis the bold. Uh, <laughs> picks oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> He's been real bold so far. The first He's of his very name. Bold. Uh, first, he, he touches himself to heal himself again. <laughs> He's at full hit points, but he just really wants to make sure, because it's real scary in that furnace. He picks up a cold iron kukri, a uh, light steel shield. Okay. Scale mail. Okay. A potion of cure light wounds, of course, for later. A nightcap, if you will. Do not read every item on your character <laughs> sheet. <laughs> and then climbs up the stairs with a 20 to climb. You backflip up the duct. Yep. And you're all in this mighty boiler. And you see Brett Ratner standing at the edge with the iron door open. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. What do you do? He looks into the boiler. What does he see? You're in the boiler. Yeah. You climb, you what does he see the room. In you there. see a room in complete darkness. Do you have dark vision? Yeah. He's a rat. Well, let's go to the map. Oh, okay. Put it on the board. Grant and Joe, don't look at my map, and my lip keeps tingling. I looked. All right. Talk while I do this. <laughs> Joe, so what made you pick Rat Folk uh, Elder Mythos Scholar? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I said class. Elder Mythos Scholar because it was so highly picked. Uh, I was worried about it because we have so many casters, but I was like, it seems like a cool thing for this adventure. And then Rat Folk because everybody else is human. Right. I was like, I can't pick another human. Right. And uh, they have an intelligence bonus. I don't know. I just picked a Rat Folk. But you picked Rat Folk one, more, one other time in like a car ride, right? On like a car game that, that you guys did? Uh, no, it was the first ever live GCP show. Oh, right, right, right. When Skid ran a PFS, I was a Rat oh, Folk. Oh, that's right. Nicodemus. Yeah. Nicodemus. That's, no, yeah. Nicodemus was his familiar, uh, I believe. Yes. Yes. His snake. But, yes. Right. Rat folk. Awesome. I only get to play him one time, so I want to cool. stretch Maybe those muscles. Maybe he'll last one more episode. Yeah. You look out and you see mighty iron boilers crowding the room here. Their pipes piercing the walls and the ceiling. Shadows and rust fill the narrow gaps between these cold tanks. What do you do? What? Did you mean to not reveal something here? No, I revealed everything. That you're inside the boiler, you're peeking out into that room. Okay, he'll walk into that room. Walk into that room. Uh, Does anybody follow him? Right here. Uh, yeah. That man who doesn't know who he is will follow directly <laughs> up. <after>. Okay. <laughs> Britt Ratner walks up. Matthew. Closes on the door. Uh, Matthew, Matthew's character is going to have to cast light so she can see, and then she'll walk into the room. You cast light so you can see? Yeah, she'll cast it on. God. Okay. Did you just get sparked? I did, microphone? and it Stop. really hurt. Stop licking the Stop microphone. Stop licking the mic. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just soiled myself. Let <laughs> me uh, roll a perception check. 11. 25. Ooh. Natural one. Chicken. Oh, drink. The old chicken and cheese roll. Chicken and cheese. Seven. Are you still in the boiler or you're out? I'm right behind uh, Are you Jeff's out character. or are you still in the boiler? No, I, I, I'm in the boiler room. You climb out. Yeah. Mrs. O'Lady <laughs> casts light in the room. But as that light starts to fill the room... Each of you, with the exception of Brett Ratner, see a tiny, faint glow emanating from beneath a boiler towards the rear of the room. 
Uh, it clashes with the light emanating from her magic. I, I see this? Yes. I duck down. I'd like dropped my hands and knees and like tilt my head down to look and see where it's coming <sighs> from. Slowly. So yeah. Sheila. Slowly, dramatically. Sheila gets down and peeks her head under. And as you look under, you see glowing eyes of a tiny little creature that has dozens of writhing face tendrils that lash out at you as multiple creatures start scurrying out at your feet. Oh! Oh! And we'll see you at PAX Unplugged. Oh! Joseph O'Brien. Two characters in one night. Give it up for Skidmar. <laughs> and give it up for yourselves. Thank you for coming out. You're the best. To GCB Live. Thank you for coming. Let's do it again sometime. Yes. Woo.